Oh, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Amateur Radio Channel. Now, um, someone let me know that one of my previous videos called something like a look inside the MFJ 945E um, antenna tuner uh, wasn't playing properly. So, uh, um, as quite a few people are interested in seeing what's inside one of these, I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd redo it. Okay, so this is the uh, the 945E, the MFJ. Um, they call it a mobile antenna tuner, and that's because on the back it's got um, an SO239 socket for the connection to your radio, and it's got one for the connection to the antenna. So in a mobile situation, you'd have a you know, coax going out to the antenna on the vehicle, and it would just plug in there. So there's no room for wire antennas and balanced outputs and all that sort of stuff because this is designed specifically for tweaking in uh, mobile antennas. That said, you can, um, <coughs> excuse me, just had uh, just had some chia seeds. <laughs> <coughs> and, uh, okay, right. Now, um, if you wanted to connect a wire antenna to this, it's not a problem because uh, the standard run-of-the-mill uh, banana plug, that's just an ordinary banana plug, plugs in there fine and you could connect a wire antenna to it connect the ground to there and you could use it at home just like any other um, ATU on a wire antenna or you could use it at home if you've got a coax going out to your uh, the, the antenna at home you could um, just put the coax onto there and uh, it's going to work like any other ATU this is just a T-match um, there's no difference between this and any other T-match ATU so the fact that they call it a mobile tuner it's just um, uh, simply because it hasn't got the other uh, output uh, uh, connections on it. It's quite a nice, uh, it's quite a nice little unit. You can switch the unit out. Uh, you've got high and low power there, and um, you've got a lamp there that illuminates the uh, uh, the meters that you can turn on and off. Okay. Well, uh, the. Um I might, might, <coughs> might be puffing and panting a bit here because I'm uh, I'm actually in a very funny position. If you can imagine, I've got a tripod and a camera between me and the tuner. You'll you'll uh, you might get an appreciation for the peculiar position I have to be in uh, to do this. Pardon me. Okay. Right now, a look inside. Uh, now it's very easy to take apart. I should of course have a screwdriver ready to go, but uh, there's only two screws on the back. One there. Of course, the tripod's in the way, and one there. Slide the back off. And that is what is inside it. Um, there's uh, the uh, the main inductor there. There's a smaller inductor down there as well for the uh, that'll allow it to tune the lower frequencies. In here, you can see. I don't know if you can see. Actually, there's a there's the switch in there. Never ever adjust this switch while your transmit power is on. So um, always release the PTT before you change this switch position because it's <clears throat> it's not a, um, um, uh, a particularly uh, high voltage um, type switch. So you could potentially uh, damage the switch by uh, by changing the inductor tappings with the switch when the um, when the PTT is pressed. So press the PTT. If you think you need another inductance setting, release the PTT and turn the knob. Okay, and here's the two tuning capacitors. Uh, you can see the um, you can see the spacing on those capacitors. That's fully meshed there. That's maximum capacitance. That's minimum capacitance. Um, now. 
MFJ say this tuner is uh, rated to 300 watts. Personally, um, I'd be surprised. Um, I, I wouldn't use that size capacitors for tuning 300 watts uh, myself. I'm only, I'm only using it on a, um, an 857, so I'm only using it on 100 watts. Um, if you cold tune it with an antenna analyzer, uh, you could probably use it for 300 watts. So you'd actually you'd tune it all up using an antenna analyzer before you applied any transmitter power. But um, if you were tuning this with 300 watts going through it, I think you might have problems with these arcing over. Uh, as an example, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> as an example, here's another capacitor. Uh, there we go. That's another. That's another air-spaced. That's an air-spaced tuning capacitor. Uh, that would easily take 500 watts. Um, but if you look at the look at the size of that capacitor, compared with the size of the capacitors in there, um, you know that that capacitor is actually larger than the uh, larger than the actual tuning unit. If I put that on there for scale. Okay, now oh, the sun has just been obscured by a cloud. See, that's just gone suddenly dark. <coughs> but never mind. I'll uh, I'll continue. If this if this doesn't look any good, I'll do it again. But now I uh, actually threw away my original instructions for this uh, for this tuner. Um, oh, the other thing too is I wouldn't be crazy about putting 300 watts through a slide switch. Um, but uh, as I said previously, for 100 watts should be uh, should be okay. So if you're using this portable or mobile with an 857 or um, you know something like that, um, it should be fine. I've, I've certainly been using this uh, with an 857, and I've used it portable, and I've used it at home, and I've had no problem with it at all uh, with 100 watts. Okay, now it says. Uh, I, I actually downloaded a um, PDF of the instructions because I, I previously thrown mine away. But it does say the inductor switch, the inductor switch on the 945E rep represents a maximum inductance at position A, minimum inductance at position L, um, and. Uh, Goes on to mention the capacitors. Okay, the transmitter and antenna controls both represent maximum capacitance at position 10. Now, <clears throat> if you've got one of these, um, this information is not correct. So if you've got your instructions handy, you might just want to make a note on your instructions because um, if we uh, if we look at that. You can see the maximum capacitance is with the capacitors meshed, like that. That's that's unmeshed, and that's meshed. So if we put them on maximum capacitance like that, and then look at the knobs, they're actually showing zero, not ten. Okay. So the capacitors are at maximum capacitance when at zero, not at ten. Okay. Now the inductance, well what we could actually do is, I've got this, uh, oh actually let's just, let's just, uh, I'll just show you that's true. Um, I'll use the, use a banana, I'll, I'll use a couple of banana plugs. Um, I get a couple of banana plugs. Put one in there. Put one in there. Just take the plastic off. Now this won't be an accurate reading because the capacitors are actually in circuit. But just as a uh, just as a as a as a demonstration. Uh, I'll get that to there. Put the capacitance meter on. Calibrate 
rate it. So this is just a relative capacitance reading so that you can see. So I'm probably shaking a bit because of this funny position I'm in. If you could imagine me being bent through 45 degrees over the camera. Okay, so you can see that is showing 172 picofarads, 172.8 picofarads, like that. And that is with these capacitors here both fully meshed. Okay, and we know because we've just seen the front that they're both on zero. So if I adjust one of these capacitors. Now you can see that capacitance is falling. Can you see that? That's going down and down and down. That's the minimum capacitance. And if I take the other one to the minimum capacitance, our through capacitance is now 13.1 picofarads. And if we look at the front of it, now showing 10 see that so when it says 10 when these when these say indicate 10 it's actually a minimum capacitance not the maximum capacitance so those instructions are wrong with regard capacitance so if you've got your instructions handy just make a note on there just remember being a T match a T match has a most efficient throughput of power when you have the maximum capacitance so when you tune it, you want the capacitors set to the most capacitance possible. Because remember, a T-match will give you more than one tuning solution. So try a couple and go for the one that uh, gives you the most capacitance. OK, well, that's the, uh, that's the capacitor. Now let's see if the inductor... I think the inductance one is right. It says the inductor represents the maximum inductance at position A. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, well, let's see if we can measure that. Again, it's just a relative, uh, uh, a relative measurement. The inductor would actually need to be out of circuit to get the actual accurate uh, inductance reading. Uh, On inductance, calibrate it. Now the coil in a T match goes between the two capacitors and ground. So I can put one of those on ground, I can put another one of those on there, which is the top of the coil. with inductance I have to short them together to cut to uh, zero it <coughs> okay so now it's zeroed put that on there put that on there okay so at A at A if I survive this video it will be a miracle at A, <coughs> it's showing 25.44 microhenries. Okay. At B, it's 15.65 microhenries. Uh, C is 11, 9, and you can see that inductance is dropping. Okay. Go all the way around to L. Well, we've got 0.2 microhenries. So it says here, um, the inductor switch on the MFJ945E rep represents maximum inductance at position A. OK, so we've just measured that and we found that to be true. So just remember, if you get one of these, um, just make a little note on your instructions that um, uh, the, uh, what it tells you about the inductance is correct. Maximum inductance is at A. You just see that's gone back up there to 25 microhenries. That's L, 
that's 0.14 microhenries. So maximum inductance is at A, but the uh, maximum capacitance is at zero. And not at the transmitter antenna controls. This, <coughs> these are the two capacitors. Both represent maximum capacitance at position 10. Well, no, they don't. They represent maximum capacitance at position 0. So if you remember that, uh, you'll be fine. Um, so there we go. That's a quick look inside uh, the MFJ 945E mobile tuner. And um, I'll, just, I'll just quickly... Uh, I'll just quickly um, scratch a uh, schematic, <coughs> and because it's a uh, remember this is a T match, and it's the one it's the type it's it's the type of uh, tuner used most by radio hams. So the T match is um, input capacitor capacitor output. like that and you got another inductor there in this particular one so that's the uh, that's the that's the circuit diagram of it where that would be the transmitter capacitor and that there would be the antenna capacitor and this is the switch so you don't you'd actually have a switch that that would short out these turns here so the switch will be at the bottom at maximum inductance at minimum inductance. <laughs> no, maximum inductance, I'll get it right in a minute. But it doesn't matter, <laughs> regardless. You know that, <clears throat> excuse me, at position A, you're getting uh, maximum inductance. And, um, and uh, you're getting maximum capacitance at, uh, at zero on the, uh, on the dials. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, I don't think there's anything else I'll put in the other video. Um, basically it's just a, uh, as the title suggests, a quick look inside an MFJ 945E uh, mobile tuner. Oh, one thing I will say, that um, I don't think the, uh, from memory, I haven't actually looked at it, but uh, from memory I don't think the, um, I don't think the low power range uh, tracks very well. So you can use it for SWR, but um, it won't give you an accurate uh, it won't give you an accurate forward power meter uh, forward power reading. So if you find that on yours on the on the high range, it will tell you your um, forward power is 50 watts if it happens to be 50 watts. If you then switch down to 5 watts and go to the low power uh, range, it's going to show you um, it will still show you 50. I think from memory, um, it doesn't go to the. Um, let's see, this is sort of on the on the lower part of this range. It goes up here to six watts, and uh, it doesn't actually track. So on low power, <coughs> it looks like they've said when they've designed it. Oh well, it doesn't matter because they'll just assume it's to divide by ten. So I think five watts goes to the same point that fifty watts does. But the important bit, of course, is the SWR. That's the bit, that's the bit that you're interested in minimising because that forward power, although on the high range it's reasonably accurate, it's only a, uh, it's only a relative indication, really. Okay, well uh, I hope you found that interesting or informative or both, and uh, as always thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>